Welcome everyone to an IXL tutorial on West Explains Best. We're gonna learn some geometry today. We're talking about kites, the properties of kites on IXL. Let's go ahead and get started. It says quadrilateral PQRS, very creative name, is a kite. No surprises there. What is the measure of angle P? All right, one of the cool things about kites. Well, we have here uh, two angles that are already given. And if you were to draw a line here, across uh, connecting R and P, it would create two isosceles triangles. So what we need to do here is, um, that's just one of the properties of kites, that's where those are given there. Um, but one of the other cool things about kites is they have op one set of opposite angles that are congruent. So R is gonna be congruent to P. So what we need to do here is we simply need to do 360, subtract 74, subtract 92. Okay, once we do that, we get uh, 194. So 194 is split evenly between angle R and angle P, because those two are congruent, R and P are congruent. So if they're the same, and uh, there's 360 degrees in a complete quadrilateral, any quadrilateral has 360 degrees, we just simply need to divide 194 divided by two to find uh, angle R and P. So angle R and P are congruent after I divide it by two and I get 97 for that. Okay, I have the same case here. We're gonna repeat this process. We have to first identify which angles are congruent. If those are two different values that I'm getting there, then obviously those are not the congruent angles. I need to first add those up. 143 plus 75, and that's 218. Now the total for all four angles needs to be 360. So I'm gonna do 360 minus that, and I get 142. 142 gets split between Z and X, okay? So what I need to do from here is take 142, divide it by two, because there's two angles that I'm splitting it evenly between, and it's 71. So measure of angle Z, which is equal to X, is gonna be 71. Submit that, there we go. Okay, same deal here. Uh, IXL is very repetitive. We have 360 degrees and a complete uh, quadrilateral, but we're gonna subtract 123 and 101. Once I do that, I get 136. 136 gets split evenly between D and F. You'll notice the angles that are congruent are always with two different sides next to each other. So these are not congruent sides. C, D, and D, E are not congruent. Okay, and that's how you know that those two angles right there both sitting uh, between the non-congruent sides, the vertex between the non-congruent sides are gonna always be congruent in a kite. So we have 136 that gets divided evenly between uh, D and F, so we have to divide by two. Once we do 136 divided by two, we get 68, and that's gonna be measure of angle F and also D. So we submit that, and we got it. Okay, quadrilateral EFGH is a kite. Wow, these problems are identical. They're very similar to each other. So we just do 360 minus 43, minus 73, that's what I'm doing my calculator, divide by two, and you get 122. Brilliant. Guess what we're doing with this? 151 plus 89 equals, subtract from 360, divide by two, 60. You got it. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, we're doing, well, another way to do it is 360 minus 109 minus 69 divided by two. And we should get what, 91? And we're done with this very soon. We're gonna get to the smart score that we want. Same thing, 360 minus 144 minus 88. Guess what, divided by two, split among two angles, we get 64. Okay, oh, cool, new problem. Uh, quadrilateral V, W, X, Y is a kite. What is U, W? All right, here, um, it's trying to trick you, but it's just asking for this leg here. We actually have to use the Pythagorean theorem. It creates a 90 degree, a right triangle here it, between 60, our missing value, U, W, and then our hypotenuse is 68. That The hypotenuse is opposite this 90 degree angle. So this is 90 degree angle. That's one of the prop properties of a kite is the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So simply we have to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared is our missing length, UW. B squared is 60. 
or 6c squared, and then uh, vx is our hypotenuse, or c squared, equals c squared, 68 squared. So we're going to do 68 squared, okay, equals 60 squared plus uw, or x squared, or a squared, however you want to say it. So essentially, I need to do our c squared minus our b squared, which is 60 squared, and then take the square root of that. And once I do all that, I get 32. Okay, uh, same deal here, except now our c squared is 34, uh, our a squared is 16, and we're looking for df. So we're gonna do 34 squared minus 16 squared. Whoops, I forgot the minus sign on my calculator. You can't see it, but that's what happened. Minus 16 squared, and then I take the square root of that. Always take, so your big side, which is opposite the 90, opposite that side, not touching the 90, squared, minus this side, squared, this is Pythagorean theorem, is gonna be equal to the square root, or that side squared, so then we take the square root at the end. And once I take the square root at the end, I get 30. If you get a number that's bigger than your hypotenuse, you screwed up. Excellent. Now entering the challenge zone, are you ready? What is TU? Okay, so then this is the same process, Pythagorean theorem. We have 52 squared minus 20 squared, that's 400, I know that one. And then we're gonna take the square root of that. So we get 48. Again, it's smaller than our hypotenuse, so we're good to go, TU, 48. Good work. Okay, I reached my daily practice limit. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope. This helped you with all your IXL needs. IXL is super repetitive, I know, uh, but hopefully this made it a little bit more bearable. Hope to see you next time on West Explains Best. Take care.